Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about bird toy safety. Now there are lots of different things to cover so I'll cover as much as possible, but if you think I've missed anything or you'd like to share your own bird toy safety tips, do let me know down in the comments as I'd love to hear from you. But I wanted to start this video by saying that no toy is 100% safe. You can get the most amazing natural toys and everything like that, but there's always a risk with every toy. So you need to bear that in mind. You need to know your bird's own behavior and what they interact with and how. So we're gonna dive straight into a controversial one, cause why not? Uh, and that is how to attach your toys to your bird's cage. And there are several different ways of doing it, but typically speaking, when you get a toy, you're normally gonna get pair links or quick links, sometimes called C-rings, D-rings, they've got loads of different names. But essentially, the pair rings are in a pear shape and the quick links look like this. And both of them have locking mechanisms, they don't open when you pinch them. But these still pose a risk because some birds like to unfurl them and then there's always a risk that they could get their beak caught in them. Now, for most birds, this won't be a problem. For my birds, I know they don't interact with these so I can still use them. But for other birds, usually macaws and cockatoos, they love to go to the top of the cage and they love to unwind them and play with them and then there's that risk that they could get caught. Now some people do use plastic ones of these and there's still a risk that you could get plastic caught in your bird's beak. But again, you need to know your own bird. And if you think that there's a risk that they're gonna start playing with these, then it's probably better to use something else. And I'd say the best alternative is probably paper string because you, it's just simple. If you tie a very tight knot, then they aren't gonna get caught in it. But it does mean you can't really move it around very often unless you replace the string because it will get weaker when you undo it and redo do it up. So personally I do use these and I do uh, keep very aware of the risks and if I think that my birds were going to go and play with them I would take them out and replace them but I know they don't so it's fine. I also check all of them every single day that are in the cages because I just want to make sure they're all nice and tight so my birds couldn't accidentally get caught on them. But the main thing to remember is to not get any kind of carabiner style ones. And by that I mean one, obviously I don't have them because they're not safe. But if you were to hold it and you were to pinch it and it opens, that is very much a risk for any bird because it doesn't take much for them to get caught in it. Their feet, their beaks, tongues, whatever. So throw those away and go for paper string or something like this if you think that your birds won't play with them. I forgot to mention as well that some toys actually come with these amazing coconut hooks. So if you have toys like this, that's really cool. But again, these come with their own potential risks that your birds might play with them and then accidentally unhook them and they'll fall down. So there's just lots to think about. Again, it's all about knowing your own bird. Now, moving on from this, a lot of safety comes from toy placement as well. You wanna make sure that your birds can access the toys in a nice, safe way. So I like to put toys near perches or just out of reach of perches because sometimes my birds like to climb on bigger toys and things like that. Uh, and just be aware of how accessible they are, whether your birds can actually use them where they are, and if there's any kind of entrapment issues as well. So just be really mindful, have a step back after you've furnished your bird's cage and think, how is this gonna work? How is my bird gonna use these items in here? So now let's talk about the biggest safety issue, which is the materials that your bird's toys are made out of. You want them to be made out of natural materials that your birds can shred. Typically, I'll talk about some others a little bit later. But you want things like lovely palm leaf toys, like this Planet Pleasures one. You want to have mahogany pods, uh, yucca, balsa, paper, cardboard, anything that they can chew really nice and easily and that's not gonna cause them harm. Now, when you provide things like cotton rope or fabrics, there is a risk that if they chew it and they ingest the fibers, it's gonna create this big uh, area of uh, fabrics that's stuck in their crop and that causes crop impaction. And that is very serious for your birds, and very expensive as well to get sorted at the vets. So they don't need to have those kinds of items in their cages, they're not very safe. And if they were to accidentally ingest a little bit of these natural materials, they would be able to digest them because they are made out of natural things like, you know, palm leaves and things. So we want to be going for those kinds of toys. Now there will be birds who are fine with some of these fabric toys, but I just don't recommend them. They don't need them. They don't really serve a purpose because more often than not, you want your bird toys to be shreddable. You want your bird's beak nice and busy shredding these so they're not shredding your door frames or your skirting boards or anything else in the house. There are other functions for toys like foraging and things like that. Although these can be foraging toys too. 
but typically speaking you want your birds to be able to shred things and of course we don't want them to be shredding materials that they can't digest and things they can get caught in because when they are uh, interacting with fabrics sometimes little fibers come off they can get their nails stuck in them can get wrapped around their toes as well so I'd, I'd avoid those if you can and also I've seen a lot of shoelace toys as well which I think is a bit strange so I'd avoid those kinds of ones because again it's all made out of materials they wouldn't be able to digest which does pose a little risk but there are so many amazing toys to choose from on the market so why go for the fabric ones when you've got you know planet pleasures <laughs> <laughs> Chip's got strong opinions about this. Feathered addictions and things like that. There's loads of amazing toys. If you have a favourite toy shop where you are in the world, let us know down in the comments so we can go and check it out and uh, spoil our little babies. Now, I wanted to talk about plastic toys now because, again, it's a bit controversial and I think it's also worth pointing out that plastic can be okay in certain situations. Now, personally, I don't give my birds any kind of plastic toys in the cages, apart from things like foraging wheels, because again, if your bird is chewing on plastic, these little tiny little plastic bits might break off, there could be sharp edges, and we don't really want them swallowing plastic, because that's gonna be the same problem with them swallowing kind of fabrics and things like that. So if we are offering our birds plastic toys like these, or you may have seen from our shorts and on David's channel as well, we have little kind of setups, like picnic setups with little um, toys, we always offer those outside of the cage so we can fully supervise them. So we can make sure that our birds are staying nice and safe. But things like the foraging wheel, uh, which don't really have any sharp edges and the whole purpose of it is to forage, I'm more comfortable having that in my bird's cage, but then I'm home all the time. So if you're not at home uh, very much during the day, you might wanna just pop this in maybe when you do get home. So you can keep an eye on it and just make sure your bird is interacting with it in the safe way. But I think plastic toys have their place, but I think it's probably better to have them outside of the cage so you can make sure that your birds are interacting with them in the right way. Now when it comes to toys, we also wanna make sure that they are staying nice and clean. Now it's very easy for our birds to poop all over the toys, especially with different placements in there, or they're just messy anyway because they poop once every 15 minutes. So we wanna make making sure that our toys are nice and clean. For plastic ones, you can just wash them up in the kitchen. For natural ones, I like to get a bit of F10 on a piece of kitchen towel and then just give them a wipe over to get rid of any kind of mess like that. But just inspect the toys because we don't want them kind of staying wet and poopy that's not very nice to chew and then there's a risk that you know bacteria and mold will multiply these toys and you have to throw them away and bird toys can be expensive so we want to make sure that we're getting the most out of them so just keep an eye on them check every day just to make sure that they are nice and clean next point i want to talk about once again is a controversial one but it's really important to mention and that is talking about bells so many bird toys out there have bells on and they aren't great for your birds for a variety of reasons. They can cause overstimulation and aggression uh, because your birds can kind of take out frustrations on the bell and the noise makes them really heightened and the reflective surface as well. There's also a risk that the clapper inside that does make the noise can come loose and birds sometimes have been known to swallow them or cut their tongues on them. So, you know, this video isn't intended to scaremonger. It's just, I wanna give you as much information as possible because I don't want your birds getting hurt. But I just think that bells are not the best thing to be offering to our birds. There are so many other ways that we can enrich them and I think that they come with more kind of downsides than they do positives. Also, if you have any coloured bells in your bird's cage, these are often coated with toxic materials because they're not stainless steel, they're coated with something. So I would avoid coloured bells at all costs. Also, you can get these kind of cat bells, which have the crisscross, which is where the little clapper sits inside. And again, your bird could get their tongue caught in there. So I just think that they, they're not great. But if you have a bird that enjoys a little bit of sound, then you could go for what's known as like a bird safe bell. And this is a long tube made of stainless steel and the clapper is all the way up inside that. I'll put like a picture here so you can see what I mean. But it means that your bird can't access the clapper so there's no risk of them swallowing that or getting their tongues caught. But there is also still the risk that they will get overstimulated um, and they'll kind of thrash about with this bell. It can also trigger hormones too. So again, I think the bells aren't really serving much of a purpose for our birds, especially when there's lots of alternatives to enrich our birds. Um, but again, all of these are your choices to make. I just wanna give you all the information. And the last point I wanted to make is just have a look at your toys, especially if you're making DIY toys, and just make sure that there's no way that your bird can get stuck in it. Now, by this I mean kind of entrapments, tanglements. If you have long bits of string that could get caught around them in any way, um, then you, know, you really wanna make sure that you're making these toys 
as safe as possible that we can. So just have a look at them and think, could my bird's head get stuck there? Could my bird kind of get halfway in and can't get out again? Just have a look at them because we want to make sure that we're keeping our little baby safe because we love them. And we want to keep them enriched as well. So just have a look at them and see what you think. I do have some DIY toy videos on my channel, so I'll leave them in the description if you'd like to go and have a look at some toys that you can make yourself that are nice and safe. But again, I do want to stress that no toy is 100% safe. It's all about, you know, assessing how your bird is going to interact with them, where you're putting it in the cage, and then we can give our birds the best lives possible with lots of fun toys. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learning a little bit more about how we can keep our birds nice and safe. Again, if you have any tips or tricks for bird toy safety, do let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also love to hear your favorite bird toy store where you are in the world. But for me and Chip and Fish, who's determined to go and poop on my hair, why not? Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day. Take care and see you later.